Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We will begin with our prayer to be followed by the national anthem. May we request everyone to put yourselves in the presence of our Lord. God Almighty, thank you for bringing us together to celebrate Cebuano culture and heritage through the sharing of our stories. We need this in this time of uncertainty, O oh God, to remind us of our identity as a people, unique, blessed, and proud. This reminder must inspire us that whatever challenges we face, whether unseen, alien, and treacherous, can always be overcome when we are united in working for the present and the future and the heritage of our children and community. We pray for our present-day heroes who are fighting against the virus and other threats that besiege us today, our own people struggling to overcome these threats, and those who have died, fallen but never forgotten. Dearest God, heal our land. Amen. Ayong hapon mga Subuanons, welcome to Gabi sa Kabilin 2020 online activities, an engaging space to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. To formally start our activity this afternoon, we would like to introduce the museum in charge of the Senora Maria Delia Coronel Folklife Museum. She's also currently teaching art subjects in senior high and college in St. Teresa's College and one of our active GSK partners. Let's welcome Ms. Caridad Gingging Dabon Balisakan. Ayong hapon kaninyong tanan sa mga subuanon o kaninyong naakaroon sa inyong lain-laing lugar sa Pilipinas. As what you have seen from the presentation, our museum is a folklife museum featuring ordinary artifacts used and made by ordinary people. But even if they are ordinary, they have special stories to tell. The artifacts that you saw are part of our tangible heritage, while the stories that they tell are part of our intangible heritage. We are here today to listen to these stories. And since we cannot visit the museums during this time of pandemic, Kabi sa Kabilin has brought the museums closer to you through the Gabi sa Kabilin online activities spearheaded by Ramon Aboitis Foundation. And since we are a folklife museum, it is also our honor to bring to you the myths and legends of our people. Before you enter our museum, you'll be greeted by a mural done by my senior high students in 2016. They have made an interpretation of the creation of the island of Cebu. So they are Trina Castles, Chiara Katigbe, and Ana Blanco. And there are more stories inside the museum especially from Sister Delia 
coronel because she has collected legends and myths all over the Philippines. And she, together with other scholars, also translated the Darangan, a Maranao epic. They translated it to English so that we will all understand and appreciate this epic. It's just a sad. A lot of us just consider museums as a place or places that collect, care, display, and interpret artifacts or objects. But then if we just view the museum that way, we only omit the human elements of the museum. An alternative approach, according to Salvador Salard Pons, director of Detroit Institute of Arts, is to think of museums as places that collect and collate human experiences. He also describes museums as spaces for empathy, a bonding medium, medium for our society. Museums should be storytellers and foster the emotional connection between people and places. At their core, stories make us care. So this afternoon, let us gather okay, and hear the stories of our people. We are very honored to have one of the best storytellers in the Philippines. She is a teacher trainer and also freelance actor and a voice artist and a visual artist and learning advocate. She received several awards like the first Salai Sayan in the year 2000, National Storytelling Competition, and she is the champion. Okay. In the adult category at the Centrong Pangkultura ng Pilipinas. Then the Family Reader's Mom of the Year in the year 2002, and highlights storytelling sessions and workshops a featured storytelling performer at the Pasinaya Centrong Pangkultura ng Pilipinas Arts Month Celebration since 2010 and workshop facilitator Pasinaya Palihan in 2018. Featured in storytelling performances and workshops in public and private school for the lower school to high school students since 1995, including performances at the Museo Pambata and international schools, LGUs around the country for the library hub program of the Department of Education, and in Brunei, Darussalam for the IDAC conference. Then film, TV, radio, online guestings, and appearances, or appeared in feature-length movie film, Hinugut Sadilim, and short indie films, and student thesis completion films for Asia Pacific Film Institute, College of St. Benilde, directed by Mr. Jake Soriano, University of the Philippines. So, without Further ado, let's welcome Madam Mary Melody Rimorca. Thank you so much, Ms. Gingging Balisakan, ang atong curator dito sa St. Teresa's College Cebu Museum. Thank you so much sa inuhang pag-produce mga kauban dito sa Ramona Boydis Foundation Incorporated. 
maayong hapon sa inyong tanan ng duyog ka namo karon sa atong programa hatag sa atong mga sukilanon kahit tungod sa atong pinalanggang Cebu o sa mga lugar sa sa atong programa nga gitawag nga gabi sa kabilin online um program or activities ah uh, Ipa si Mugna kini sa Ramon Aboitis Foundation o RAFI, apil ang St. Teresa's College Cebu, na uh, organized ni Miss Gingging Balisakan para sa ato a, ah, gikan sa STC Cebu. O ako karon kini, at nasa inyo atubangan, ako si Melody Yadaw Rimorca, o sa ako kalumna sa St. Teresa's College Cebu. Graduar ako sa kurso ng Bachelor of Arts may in Mass Communication ang muhatag sa inyo sa mga maong sugilanon hindi pa sa pasa sa ato sa ato mga apuhan mga sugilanon sa masa the creation of the island of Cebu Maria Cacao sa siglo 21 ug ang Iglina ang Filipino Cinderella ang version Sigikan sa kalape, magtatag buhol. Alam na ba mong mamati? Kung andam mo, wes, andam na sa kong magsugod sa akong mga sugilan. Ang unang sugilan nun natin karong hapon, ang mao ang The Creation of the Island of Cebu. Join me as we try to find out origins of the island of Cebu. The island of Cebu, this story, was created by the sun god Adla for his beloved son Yuta and beloved wife Dagat. Now, Yuta was a beautiful child and his mother was a lovely nymph of the sea named Dagat, who later became the protector of the seas. Let us listen to our island's beginnings. It is said that Adla, the sun god, saw this lovely maiden floating on the crest of the foam-flecked waves and fell deeply in love with her. Upon seeing Dagat, the sun god, you know, Adla then said, Who could she be? My heart is smitten by her graceful ways and lovely face. I pray that if I ask for her love, may she accept mine as well, said Adlo, the sun god. And indeed, his love was accepted by Dagat. Their union made the gods of the sky and the earth so pleased that they added their blessings to the marriage. The sun god was very much elated to be finally one in marriage with the love of his life, Naga. Their love bore them a son, a son who grew to be exceedingly handsome, and they named him Yuta or Lupa. Now we see that mother and child are very happy together, Naga and Yuta, together in that picture. Now, for his son and his beloved wife, Adlao, the sun god, wanted only the fairest island for a home. So he thought in thought, he will create an island called Cebu. Cebu is lush and verdant. All kinds of plants and flowers grew in it. These then grew into lovely creatures together with Yuta and Adla, the sun god, and the lovely wife Dagat. And not only was it filled with so much flora, there were also graceful animals that came into being. Animals like the Kabao or the Kalabao or the Karabao, who would always say, Mwah! 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 Probably saying thanking the sun god. And even the birds, big, small alike, were so happy and they tweeted and they 
croaked, and then they said, Oh, they probably were also saying thank you to the sun god. And there were a lot of other animals and creatures created. And the place was also people with spirited folk. To this day, Cebu is filled with abundant blessings from the land, the sea, and its people. To this day, Cebu is such a blessed island. And I love sun god Padla to his beloved wife Dagat, and as they bore, he created a family with their son. Yuta. The legend of the creation island of Cebu. A story about our beautiful city, or probably our beautiful place, not just city, but a beautiful Cebu. I hope you love the island of Cebu. Many versions of that, but this is one tells us of the sun god, Adlao, Yuta. So all of these three elements, do you find this in Cebu? There is much sun in Cebu. There is a big, vast of land for Yuta in Cebu. And of course, it is surrounded by the waters or the Dagat. Story, now on to the second story our second story this afternoon entitled Maria Cacao sa Siglo Baintiun O gilanon nagisugid na subling gisugid ni Heidi K. Palapar o ang mga ritrato ay nini in nini gibuhat ni Joshua S. Cabrera ang maong libro na patik o gipatik the National Commission on Culture for the Arts. Mawukin ang istorya ni Maria Cacao sa siglo XXI. Kaniadto sa langob sa langoy, sa kinatas ang bukid sa Argao, nakapuyo si Maria Cacao. Si Maria Cacao, usa ka inkanto. Anyag siya makita itod sa tagilungsod, o pupakita sa mga tagilungsod inigigtakol sa bulan. Kitawag siya sa mga tao sa maungala kay iya mang ipanag iya ang dakong kakawan, kakawan sa bukid. Ang iya mga kakaw, giingon nga itungod niya nga sa Amerika. Iyang mga kakaw, ipasakay niya sa usaka dakong bulwanong galyon, usaka dakong salakyan nga malamaton. O tungod sa kadako siyang sakayan, ang palo ni ini masangit yud sa taytayan argaw. Mahugno ang inun na taytayan matag-agi kuno niya sa suba sa argaw. Pero matag-uli sa ni Maria Kakawagikan siyang pagpan. Magdalagig kini siya og mga galanton. Nagilak-gilak ng mga kobyerto sa plato, o mga mamahalon ng mga panapton, o mga sinina ng bisti. Kining mga dala ni Maria Cacao, iyang ipahuam sa mga tagilungsod. Gamitun ko nun nila sa mga tao, sa ilang mga hikay, sa masaksal, sa bunyag, o uban pa. Kay kung adunay mga panginahang lano ng mga tao, manghulam lang sila kang Maria Cacao. Adto lang sila sa bakba sa langob sa tangtoy o bubungat sa ilang gustong hulun. Kung sa sunod na adlaw, anang-anang ang mga galamiton o kung kwarta baka ha, sa tugkaran sa ilang, ba, sa ilang balay. Ngayon na sila, Maria Cacao, Maria Cacao, pwede ba may mahuang o mga, mga kagilak-gilak ng mga kubirtos ni mo, mga plato para sa among likay, ikaugma. Ngayon na sila, anang ka Maria Cacao. O tinuod yun na kinaugmaan na ana sa tubangan si ilang mga balay. Sa kaadlaw ni Ana, adunay inhinyer na naabot sa langob ni Maria Cacao. Adun siya gihangyo 
sa engkanto. Nuryakaw! Tuyo ko sa kahangyo. Mahimo ba ang imong galyon? Tag-igagi susuba sa argaw. Aron dili na itaon mahugno ang taytayan nga among simintuhon. Ang hangyo pa sa maong inginyero, dito kang Maria Kakao. Ang mga tagilungsod, kanun may nagkanayon nga, kinahanglan daw nga ang taytayan ni muong habo, aron dili na matandog kini. Ang mga Amerikano na plano di ay nga simintayan, aron maligon kini. Misugot ko no si Maria Kakao sa maong hangyo. Pag sukad ni Adto, wala nag-agi ang iyang galyon sa suba sa araw. Pag-agod nga si Mintong Taytayan. Pura na po nung nihawa si Maria Kakao ay wala naman siya magpakita na sa mga tao o wala na po'y ipakulam sa mga tao sa mga galamiton. At tunay miingon na ang tungod ko nun ni Ini na natagam na daw si Maria Kakao sa mga tao na may huwam pa niya apan wala na ipanguli ang mga gihulman. Usahay kay Adunay maasoy na nagbuba ng tektayan dito ba sa talagete o sa manipis o sa mananga ang mga tao may ngundiyot. Anto! Sa laing suba na siguro siya may agi ang yang galyon kay laing taytaya naman karon ang nahugno wala na siya ikita na mo sa dugay yung panahon matod sa mga tao ang maong inkanto na si Maria Kakao ang istorya ni Maria Kakao iglo ang mga anindot ng mga retrato ni Buhat ni Joshua Herrera. Sa kalibro, nag-ipatik na Commission of Culture for the Arts, ang magyakakaw sa Sikho Pailipo. Nindot as paayunta nga natin mahuaman kung natin pang inahanglanon. Pero mas maayo sama sa isulti dito sa historia na hinaot paunta na tumanghula kay Bolo Sata Mubalik. In short, Maria Kakao was really a savior for the people of Argao. But definitely, they should have also given back what is due Maria Kakao, thanking her and giving back whatever they have borrowed from Maria Kakao. That's the story or the legend of Maria Kakao. This time around, I want to share the third story entitled Peregrina. A Filipino version of Cinderella, which is um, sourced from Ernestina Dog from Calape, Mantatag Bohol, and from Legends and Myths by Sister Maria Delia Coronel Aispier. Let's now listen to the story of Peregrina. Long, long time ago, in the island of Mantatag Bohol, there lived a wed widow girl, a young daughter named Peregrina. so sweet and gentle, but with a mature mind that faced any situation. To her town folks, Peregrina was popular. Almost anybody who knew Peregrina loved her so much, especially her father. She was very adorable. Now there was a deep affection between father and daughter. Her father was a traveler. And he, when he was traveling, So he thought and thought of a plan on how to help Peregrina every time he was away in his travels. Then suddenly, there clicked in his mind. Yes, why not? said Binoy. It was a brilliant idea of marrying again and leaving Peregrina in the care of a stepmother. So that evening, while Long Binoy was reclining on his favorite rocking chair or tumba-tumba, On their veranda, savoring his pipe after the simple supper, he then called for his daughter, Peryang. Peryang! Peryang! Hindi, Peryang! Come here! 
सेट मोड फिर या ठीक would you like somebody to be with you would you like not to be alone when i leave soon and the young was very happy and no bino i said because i will have a good and loving stepmother with two step daughters to take care of you beria bang was very happy she would not only have a mother but also two step sisters as companions now as nong binoy went on his travels several months had passed and she now lived with her step mother piryang lived with anzat her step mother and her two step sisters ukai and kikai now they were to piryang's beauty and her good qualities that captivated the hearts of the town folks they nagged they tortured they maltreated and shamed peryang on every occasion at home in nongbinoy's small hut carried her chores without any complaints without any fuss in spite of the fuss and pokai and kikai sometimes she would, she would want to escape just from you know all of these that were happening to her she would go to the seashore for refuge where she always found peace away from the nagging tongues of Nana and Zat and her step sisters and Pukai and Kiki as the days passed she became lonely and sad her growing loneliness weighed heavily on her burdened heart only the roaring waves the fishes and the cool whispering breeze witnessed the sad plight of she sobbed again and again on the dark cold windy shore waves and she saw a giant fish with a gentle voice that called her name Beriang Beriang she stopped crying she looked around and she saw this lovely giant fish before her i want to help you beriang my dear All of us in the fish kingdom are very concerned and we pity you and we have grown to love you very oh, young upon hearing this she poured out her sorrows she was told to catch a fish by nana and that first and the fish heard that very very young was told the fish very young refused adamantly but since the fish was stubbornly insistent she was forced to bring the fish home and cook her for supper at supper she felt choked with pity seeing her only friend being savored by her stepmother and stepsister spooka and kikai and nana and zat after supper peria picked the bones of the fish on the table bit by bit by bit and buried them suddenly sit no rather secretly in the garden right very young had a very wonderful dream she dreamt that a tree grew on the spot where she buried the fish bones or fruits of precious gems jewelry lovely gowns and ornamented evenings purse of satin and gold all of which were encased in a not like transparent shell pretty i thought it will not happen the next morning she went into her garden and she saw that her dream had come true carefully she gathered the fruits and she saw indeed there were there were gems there were jewelry there were precious you know precious slippers of satin and gold and even that of wonderful dresses all in case of the not like transparent shells now per young reached out on the shells her stepmother found her and grabbed the fruits from per young's hands and turned into stone into a stone statue more scared 
the stepsisters, Pukai and Kikai, they were armed and they lay flat on the ground asking Peryang for, you know, for forgiveness, just to bring back their mother again. They kissed the hem of Peregrinas, promising her that they would never be jealous of her. What do you think Peregrina would have done? If you were Peregrina, would you have forgiven them? Or would you have wanted them to be punished as well, like Nana and Zad? Let's find out. Now, like what I said earlier in my story, Peregrina was good and kind. Peregrina forgave them. And Nana and Zad, all three learned a lesson. Hard lesson to be learned was to be kind, good. Peregrina was then love. Anna and Zat, and Bukai and Kikai. And when her father, Nono, Nong no Binoy, came home, they all became a good family together. That's the story of Peregrina, the Filipino version of Cinderella, from the retellings of Destina de Lugdog and Sister Delia Coronel, Ice of Peregrina. Do you like our stories, ladies and gentlemen? Indeed, such stories coming from Cebu, from Argao and Bohol, you know, the or, you know, something that will be handed down to us from our ancestors, you know, from the folk tellers here until the present, you know, generation. And we are just so happy. And I am very much honored that I'm able to tell you the story, you know, I'm able to, to, to retell the story of the creation of the island of Cebu and Maria Cacao, Sa Siglo XXI, and of course, Peregrina, the Filipino version of Cinderella. So all of these stories, you know, they really are wonderful stories to have and to always hold on to because they speak of our being, you know, uh, as they speak rather of us as one people, culture, binded by our story. Whether you're from Cebu, from Argao, or from Bohol, or from any part of the Philippines, we have wonderful folk tales to share to each other. And with that, I am very, very honored again to have told you these stories, the story of the creation of the island of Cebu, Maria Cacao sa Siglo Baruno, and of course, Peregrina. Again, you should value our stories, for this also would tell much. I'm a teacher, and I would like to tell you that indeed, this has been an honor for me to be sharing these stories with you. Mabuhay ang Pilipino, mabuhay ang kwentong Pilipino. This afternoon, in of the online activities of the PE sa Kabilin. Daghang salamat sa pag-uban ka namo. Last epic of Central Visayas, Datong Sumanga and Bumbung Humasan. Epics are rare, if not absent, from pre colonial Sugpuanan literature. But the Jesuit missionary, Father Francisco Ignacio Alcina, who served and studied in Visayas for almost 40 years, was able to document, albeit in summarized and prose form, the epic set in Bohol of Datong Sumanga in Bugbong Humasan. The story goes, There was a princess of Bohol, well known for her beauty and talent, so much so that she was kept inside her chamber that nobody has ever really seen her, except by chance through her window. Her face is said to be like the sun or a flash of lightning, either causing awe and respect or joy and delight. Her name is Bogbong Humasanun. There was a great chief who desired to marry her. He was a brave warrior, 
and a rich ruler. His name is Datung Sumanga. One day, Datung Sumanga on his own went to the house of Bogbong Humasanun to court her. He stopped below her house and asked for the princess, without going up and paying her homage given her status and renown. Irritated and angry by his boldness, or maybe pretending to be, Bogbong Humasanun sent her maid to ask who he was. Learning of his name, she acted angrier that courtesy has not been given as it was customary for an intermediary to speak on his behalf. Had he no slaves, or perhaps a friend he trusted, who he could send? The chief left rebuffed, without saying anything. So now selecting a very dark-skinned slave as his go-between, Datung Sumanga sends him to ask for buyos, or chewed betel nut quid, as a token of acceptance of his suit. To this, Bugbong Humasanun's maid responds that she has no bongas or betel fruit to put in the buyos, nor leaves to make them. She then says that the bongas come from where the sun rose and the leaves from where the sun sets. Datong Sumanga immediately orders his slaves to embark on a journey, some to the east, the others to the west, to search for the bongas and the leaves respectively. They returned and handed all these to the intermediary, who hands them to Bubong Humasanun so she can make the buyos for his master. But Bubong Humasanun replies that she has no lion, which could be found in a distant and isolated land. So, Datong Sumango orders his ships to find the requested lion. They returned with much speed and handed the lion to the intermediary who delivers them to the princess in behalf of his master, again asking for the buyos. Once again, Bugbong Humasanan responds by presenting another request. This time, she asks that Datong Sumanga himself conducts a mangayaw or slave raid to Tandag Town on the coast of Caraga and bring to her the slaves he captures. So Datong Sumanga starts at once with his juangas or balangays, with all his warriors, and attacks Karaga. He takes 120 persons in all, whom he right away handed over to the maid of the princess. The chief's messenger asks again for the buyos, in return for the efforts done by an exhausted Datung Sumanga. Still not content, Bugbong Humasanan responds that she wants the same thing to be done in Tandag, to the islands of Yambing and Kamigin. A few days after, Datong Sumanga brings to the princess 220 persons. The princess Bugbong Humasanon demands again for the same deed to be done to the island of Sikihor and the town of Dapitan. And still, Datong Sumanga brings in more than those in past occasions. After, Bugbong Humasanun asks next for Datong Sumanga to raid the towns in Mindanao and the island of Hulo. And once again, the valiant chief brings in more than those in past occasions, each time thinking that he has finally won the princess's hand. Sire, says the maid, the princess esteems your favors and admires your bravery. But she still wants further proof that you love her, and believes that your prowess should be better known. Bugbong Humasanun then sends the chief to a great kingdom, wherein the people are very rich, and chirp like birds with their sing-song voice. That's why nobody understands them. The princess has sent Datung Sumanga to China. Datung Sumanga returns successful yet again. But Bugbong Humasanun continues to raise the stakes higher and says that she would make the buyos if he would conquer heaven. To this, the chief exclaims, We'll make an attack on the sky. We'll take a piece of it. We'll unfold one of its eight layers. And we'll seize one of its thunderclaps. We'll rob the moon of a bit of its splendor. Or if nothing else at least one ray of those that are forged in its workshops. But alas, his attempt was in vain, for he could neither reach any of the horizons, nor cover it all. 
So he returned and sent word that he had done what she had ordered, but could dedicate, not give, the thunder and lightning to her. He added, though, that unless Bugbunghu Masanun sent him the buyos immediately, which had caused him much and tired him out, he would come and personally remove her hairpiece. A very big issue at the time, indeed, for their hair was her preoccupation and source of pride, and make a sombal plume of it for his ship. When Bugbong Humasanon received the message, she began to cry, afraid he might dishonor her, and set at once to making the buyos she had denied him for so long. She then put them in a little marble casket and had them delivered through his messenger to Datong Sumanga. But Datong Sumanga returns Bugbong Humasanon's buyos, saying he would not accept them unless they are chewed and placed inside a perfumed box of gold, which he will accept as a sign of her consent and pledge of their impending wedding. In the end, Datong Sumanga and Bubong Humasanun are married with much pomp and ostentation, as befits their status and wealth. What has been narrated is a truncated form of the epic, but the story must have lasted for several nights in the telling around the campfire, and included conventions accorded the literary form and very detailed descriptions about certain customs and approved standards of the time in pre-colonial Visayas. Good afternoon. I hope you were enthralled with our storytelling session. Actually, it's a mini storytelling session for our Gabi Isa Kabilin online activities today. And with that, we would like to thank our uh, host museum, the Gang Salamat Kaayos sa ato ang host museum, the STC or St. Teresa's College Sister Maria Delia Coronel Folklife Museum, especially to the in charge Ma'am or Miss Caridad Gingging Balisakan. And of course, we would like to thank our veteran storyteller, Miss Melody Rimorca. And uh, maybe this is just a, how do you call this? Like a hint, no? That maybe next year we really would want to do a lot of storytelling sessions. So maybe that's something we can stay tuned for and uh, look forward to. We would also like to thank our all our partner museums and sites of the Gabi Isa Kabilin. Of course, I'd like to thank the GSK Organizing Committee, especially to Joey, Mardell, Arlene, Sigrid, and Mac for ensuring that we bring to you our monthly GSK online activity. And we also would like to acknowledge the help of the CHU CRM through FEI. And of course, our RAFI BDG or uh, Brand Development Group. And... Uh, we would like to invite you again to answer our evaluation, our online evaluation. And of course, you must also register. Uh, the registration sheet is still um, there in the site and the evaluation. We will be putting that up after this uh, afternoon's storytelling session. If you want to get that e-certificate and we still have our trivia, we will be giving out um, prizes for those who will be able to answer our five trivia questions. Also, that will be after this GSK online activity. And for our kids, please don't forget, we have a GSK Kids Contest about the stories that were told this afternoon. So um, please also stay tuned for the, how do you call this, guidelines no, of our GSK Kids Contest. And we'd like to remind you to, we'd like to invite you to join us again for our online activities in November. In November 20, we have a talk uh, brought to you by UP Cebu. And this will be about the aesthetic life of pre-colonial Cebuanos. And our speaker would be Professor Jay Hore. On November 27, we also have a performance uh, which will center on the afterlife of a pre-colonial Cebuano. And uh, after that will be a brief lecture on the rituals. That's on no November 27 and brought to you by the um, Chuon Temple, no? Fo Guang Shan Chuon Temple and the Guangming 
uh, Institute for the Performing Arts. And with that, we will leave you with uh, the greeting Daghang Kaayong Salamat. We and uh, we hope you will you enjoyed our GSK online activity. We hope to see you again in November's online activities and please enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye. Again, thank you so much for your valuable time and for participating in our sixth activity. We hope to see you again next month for another engaging activity to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. Only here at Kabili sa Kabilin 2020 Online Activities. Have a good day.